After four thrilling years of prototype, Mini Bita 1, a marvel in miniature ecosystems, is finally here. This is the world's first modular closed biosphere, meaning that Mini Bita can expand to create various interconnected biomes from nature. Imagine a self-contained world, a tiny replica of our vast planet. The fascinating creatures and plants that are soon to arrive here will thrive independently, relying solely on light and temperature to sustain their lives. This isn't just a biosphere, it's a mirror into Earth's own life cycle, unfolding here right before our eyes. A true closed system where life exists in its pure untouched form. That means that the plants and the animals that will soon be inside this mini biota will be living entirely independent from the outside world, with only the energy from light and the influence of temperature to grow food and power the various nutrient cycles that sustain all life. Within this biosphere, there are no artificial interventions like pumps or filters, just glass, a hint of plastic, and silicone. It took some serious innovation to get here, so let's get into how this system works. We'll start off with the three current habitat elevations. There's a terrestrial or land-based habitat, a shoreline or transitional habitat, and an aquatic habitat that houses our lake or ocean environments. Each habitat is connected in three places to the other habitat by their soil, the surface, and air. These three enclosures will be the homes to our organisms. It's basically where the magic happens. Above the terrestrial and shoreline habitats, we have the upper atmospheres. These upper atmospheres are what drives the water cycle. The back part in each atmosphere is super chilled, which causes the cold air inside to circulate with the warm air below. As the warm, humid air rises, it becomes cooler, releasing its water content into one of four reservoirs called clouds. The clouds gradually become saturated with water and eventually tip over, releasing a varying amount of water as rain below. There are also several connection points on each side of the atmosphere, and those are to connect pipes to allow the movement of air that will then influence weather patterns. They're not yet used, but they will be later down the road. Now, as you can imagine, light is at the very heart of mini biota, much like the sun, which powers and sustains life here on Earth. Strong light pours down from above, where lights are nestled over a clear glass lid over top of each habitat. This light is not only a source of energy and warmth, but the light is absorbed by plants, which in turn creates food within the system. As you can see here, the fixtures are 3D printed, and the bulbs here are chosen for their modularity. Next, we have temperature, which is controlled by pumping water to the outer surface of each habitat and is either heated or chilled in order to influence the temperature inside. Doing this ensures consistent temperatures in the habitat and is ultimately what powers the convection currents that create wind. In the past four years, these systems have all been freshwater habitats. However, I'm incredibly excited to say that this system here will be the first ever marine environment. It will contain an ocean habitat, a beach, shoreline, and a coastal grassland. This will be our starting point, and there will be more habitats added down the road, such as a lake, estuary, desert, and tundra environments. Since working on this system for years now, I've learned that life can not only thrive here, but the interactions in this ecosystem can be a pretty compelling story that clearly shows the delicate balance of nature's interconnectedness. These interactions reveal how each organism, no matter how small, play a crucial role in maintaining the overall health and stability of the environment. From the tiniest microorganism to the more complex creatures, every link in the food chain is vital. Watching these dynamics unfold has highlighted the fragility and resilience of ecosystems, providing invaluable insight into the workings of our very own planet. My hope is that this journey through Mini Bioda becomes a microcosm of the broader natural world and offers a unique perspective of the intricate dance of life. In our next chapter, we'll plant the seeds of life in Mini Bioda 1. The journey is about to get much more exciting, so make sure that you subscribe to witness the birth of a miniature world. Hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.